Okay, this is Plus Politics, in case you're just joining us. And my name is Nyamgul Agaji. Uh, the elections have come and gone. A lot of people may be aggrieved, but uh, now we should be talking more about the healing process of our community, of our society, and what do we do about that? Why do the things that even happen in Nigeria happen? We're glad today we're, be we're being joined by a political scientist who is going to help us x-ray some of the things that... Uh, uh, need to be addressed by the incoming administration uh, come May 29. And it's my pleasure to welcome today uh, Mr. Fred Noho, a political scientist. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, well, uh, this, is, this is this moment, you know, we've had this election, a lot of people are grieved, a lot of people are saying it didn't go the way it should go, even though some people... Uh, may not be complaining that they lost, the people that they supported lost. They're talking about transparency that was not there, so many issues. But now, a major issue that we should be addressing is how we can heal as a country. Uh, let, us, let us just get to know, in your opinion, some of the things that we need to start putting in place, even before the inauguration, so that we can move on as a country. Okay, uh, thank you very much. Um, you know, as a society, um, as Nigerians, we are not uh, new to things like this. It's been like part of us since 1960. We've had a series of uh, you know, issues that have bedeviled our society, our politics up to this moment. Yes, um, I would have thought that by now we would have you know, has grown some of these ills you know, that uh, affect our society in terms of politics and all of that. But here we are. Um, well, what's done is done, but again, we must move on. And then, because, uh, you know, society must continue to grow, uh, whichever way you look at it. So some of the things we need to do to heal the wound is, um, you know, to actually try to talk to the people, the Nigerian society, the common man who do not see as much as the big man out there sees. Because the problem, the reason why we have issues in society is that there's gap in understanding. Once there's gap and those gaps are not being filled, people... Uh, tend to feel in certain ways, and that leads to, you know, um, conflicts of, uh, of, of, of uh, issues, and uh, for that leads to, you know, what you can call violent uh, confrontation. Um, so, first and foremost, we, we've uh, conducted election, we've seen winners, those people who have won must see, the, must see themselves as magnanimous, you know, winners, and they should also be able to Talk to the Nigerian society, talk to the Nigerian people, make them feel that, okay, I understand that we have issues and that the election that has brought us this far is not uh, totally free of, uh, you know, certain ills. So that uh, you need to actually assure the Nigerian society that there is need to tackle certain things in the society that they, those who have won, will, at the end of the day, attend to those things that seems to divide us more than mm. unite us. Okay, um, using Delta as a case study, because you're from Delta, um, would like to know the political climate in there. Some people before the election were, um, were complaining a lot about the governor, who eventually was the um, running mate to the PDP presidential candidate, uh, Okoa. And uh, they were saying a lot of things about um, how he could have done better and all that. So in, in, your, in your opinion, if he failed to satisfy the people, I'm not saying he did, but if he failed to satisfy the people, or if the people saw that he failed to satisfy them, even though he did his best, what do you think were some of the things that were missing that he could have done better that whoever is taking over from him should do? Because everybody would just be thinking someone who is contesting as a vice uh, presidential candidate in an election, you will even win like 100% in your state. It didn't happen that way in Delta State. No. So which means some people still felt that he didn't deserve it. So what are some of the things that he could have done that the next person would do or should do? Okay. Um, Delta State is more like a micro Nigeria uh, because it has, um, the last time I checked, about five or six different, uh, you know, nationalities in there. You have the Jaws, you have the Sokos, the Robos, the Chakiris, the Ndokwa, mm -hmm. who are also, in their own rights, fragmented into different people 
you know, because the Dokwa people are part of the Igbo people. But if you ask the, the, the Dokwa person, it tells you it's not an Igbo person. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have different people in that same in that place. Um, to be fair to the government, to the government of uh, Okowa, um, uh, he, he he has, uh, in certain ways, done well because if you compare his administration to the one before himself, uh, you will see a little bit of you know uh, improvement in, in what he has done. But uh, I like to say that it's not important for it's not it's not uh, it's not it's not really possible for any government to try to to you know. Uh, satisfy everyone in any society is impossible, no matter how good you are. And so to that extent, well, some people will feel that he hasn't done much. Uh, but you know, most times, when we respond to issues of, uh, uh, of politics in Nigeria, we tend to respond based on our political affiliation. Uh, so you tend to see that a man in, in Party A will always not speak well of Party B, even if they are doing the right thing. But you also find that the man in Party B will always speak good about Party B, even if they are not doing the right thing. And so most times our response is colored by where our, you know, our interest lies in politics. Um, Oboeori is there today. He has, been, he has been elected, the incoming governor. Uh, I, I wish him well in, his, in whatever it is he's going to do. But I also would like to suggest to him that um, Part of the things that the present administration did that a lot of people didn't get uh, to know about or didn't feel good about is that the reason is mostly because um, civil servants try, try all the time, always try to hijack those things. For example, this government did something about, uh, uh, they did a lot of empowerment to young people, uh, you know, but if you ask yourself, who are the beneficiaries of those, of those uh, empowerments? They are usually uh, younger ones to uh, uh, civil servants, you know, politicians. My brother must, must be there. My sister must be there. And you find that at the end of those empowerment, those who got, who got starter packs end up, you know, selling those things right there. So the, if, 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 if I trained you on on how to, for example, on computer, for example, and I gave you a laptop and a few other a printer to, to, to kickstart your business, and right there and there you sell it. Then the, the idea, the, the, the reason for the, inter, the, the training is actually lost. Because it means that whatever monies I have been invested in you, you are not going to plow back into the society. The idea of why governments give, uh, you know, train people and say, okay, I'll give you a startup, I should be able to, be able to encourage, you know, cottage industries, some small businesses, that at the end of the day, we end up employing one more person. Because if you have two people that are earning, taking, uh, earning something from a particular business, those two people end up, you know, um, affecting other people, which is the shame at the end of the day. Uh, but so uh, my, adv my advice to Borego is that if he has to do anything, uh, he has to find a way to ensure that whatever he does are not being hijacked by one, politicians. Secondly, uh, the civil service people who are almost all the time, you know, influence who become a beneficiary at the end of the day. Okay, let's move to the national scene as it is. A lot of times people do so many things. Uh, corruption that we're talking about, sometimes we point at only politicians and we leave the ordinary man, the civil servant and all that out of it. But we know that corruption is in, in every sphere, especially in this Nigeria. I don't know about other climes. I'm talking about the country, I know. Uh, so, but what we fail to address is not the corruption itself, but the reason some people behave the way they behave. Why would a permanent secretary steal? Why would a cleaner not, or a messenger not find a file in an office? Why, would, why, why do these things happen? What do you think that the next administration, the national uh, I'm talking about now, should do to make sure that we begin systematically to fight this corruption? Well, Nigeria is, is a society that, that has bred more of powerful men than powerful institutions. What works for America is not a powerful man. It is an institution, a system 
that you know you cannot avoid but key into we have uh, you know corporations in, in our in Nigeria, Nigerian society SPDC Chevron and all of that all of that the man that works in Chevron or share and the man that works that works in the in our civil service or the minister there's no difference they are the same Nigerians but why the man in, in, in Chevron the fire comes to his table, he pushes it on. He pushes immediately. He does his part and moves it to the next person. The man in the civil service just keeps the fire there because there's even nothing to show that the fire got to his table in the first place. So nothing tracks it because it is manual. Whereas in SPDC, it's, it's automated. You don't, you don't push you know, hard, hard fires. You push soft fires. So that when we begin to locate where is that fire, a click tells you that this fire is on that table. And in fact, it has, been, it has been on that table for the past 48 hours. So if you know that um, there's a fire on your table that you need to deal with, and that if you fail to deal with it, deal with it in the next 48 hours, you're going to get a query, you want to deal with it immediately. But that doesn't happen in our, in our, in our you know, uh, civil, society, civil, civil service. You know, because at the end of the day, we always want to get something before we push the fire. So the, the problem with our civil, with our government is actually systematic system. Because the system has not encouraged the man to do what he should do. Year in, year out, you find budgets, national budgets, with billions voted for computer. But go to this, go to the civil, uh, to, to these offices. Do they really use the computers? Why is it that I, who is not a, a, who is not a, a member of the civil service, civil service mm. cannot in my own house type something and query that particular office and I get a response? Why should I have to leave my house to go to that that office to do things? So these are some of the things that you know are be de be de in our society. But when you say when when you say um, uh, someone has to ask for something before they can do a thing, are they not paid salaries? And when you that retire, you thing. don't get your your that, pensions that, that and is, all that. That is that is another thing. For example, currently, what is the take home of the of, of the lowest earner in the, in the civil service? Thirty thousand naira, in some cases less. How much is a bag of rice? It's about forty thousand. Mm -hmm. So the man cannot even afford to buy a bag of rice in the first place. The man cannot even afford to live in the house in the first place. He has to rely on that salary. So that is why we say the corruption in Nigeria is systematic. It's, 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 systemic stuff. Uh, it's a systemic uh, process. Because the, the, the system that treats you, the reward system, mm. does not treat you in such a way that you cannot live above certain things. Above, above certain threshold, it keeps you down at that at perpetually. The highest salary earner in the civil service in the civil service may not earn up to two hundred thousand. I doubt it very much. But if you earn two hundred thousand naira in today's economy, and you have two kids in the house plus you and your wife, that's the four of you. You need a bag of rice in the house for thirty days. You need to buy a uh, gari. You need to clothe the children. You need to pay their school fees. You need to pay school uh, rent. You need to transport yourself to and fro. Even if you have a car, you have to fuel it. You have to fuel it. So mm -hmm. how does 200000 naira take you home? In the first place, it's going to be difficult. Yet we have people who earn 30000 We have people who are, direct, who are in director cadre, earning not more than 100000 So the system has, in certain ways, you know, built in those people psychologically that for them to get by and get by reasonably, they must be able to look for ways mm -hmm. to augment whatever that comes to them at the end of the month. And where else will they gather from? But from their customers. And who are their customers? <laughs> Me and you. <laughs> I like the way you put it, customers. We all have become customers. It's, it's, a, it's a matter of survival, as, as it course, is, no yes. matter what. So yes. which means if we're looking at corruption, we can't just be looking at the people who are doing it, but we'll be looking at the reason behind their doing it. Do. A psychological thing, that's a very, a very strong, a strong way to, to 
get addicted to something, as it were. But how can we start this consciousness, this national consciousness, this awareness, this, to speak to the people how to do better? What medium can we use to do that? Yeah, actually, in Nigeria, as it is today, actually preps you to become very poor. And so, you spend 30 years of your time, or 35 years, or 60 years, uh, at 60, whatever, mm. whichever is the case, to work for your government. And at, by the time you retire, you retire poorer than you were when you, when you, when you started your career. In addition to that, your civilian benefit may not even get to you until you die. In fact, you may die in the process of asking for that particular thing. Yeah, right now, I just lost a sister who retired like five, four years ago, and she didn't have her benefit, and she's gone. So why should that be? And so some people in, this, in, the, in the civil service have got, come to think about it. Okay, so here we are. We have governors who's been governors in their respective states, and they only have to be there for at, at maximum eight years. And when they leave, they live with hands-on pecs. Just eight years with hands-on pecs. But I've spent my, my entire life here trying to make the system work. I leave, the governor does not even think about me when he's leaving. He does not think that I need to get my retirement benefit. <clears throat> the minute I leave the system. So I keep coming back to remind him every day. I think this is the time we need to start, first of all, building that conscience in the Nigerian person. I remember very well when uh, we were growing up, after the Civil War, we were having movies, cinemas that were coming, those ones that used white clothes, you mm -hmm. know, and projectors yeah. and yes, all that, yes. uh, to show us the, the effects of wars so that everybody, whether you witness the war or not, if you watch those movies, it will tell you that a war is not something you must think about at all. Yes. So there is that propaganda that is positive enough I think we should start telling our stories and talking to ourselves using the arts and everything that we have at our disposal. Our music is like the great, one of the greatest in the world. Our movies are also only next to Hollywood and all that. Why not we use these avenues to begin to tell our stories and talk to ourselves as well? Fred has done his part. I'm hoping that you too will do your part. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you very much, and thank you for having me here. And with that brief discussion with Fred Noho, political scientist and author, we wrap it up on the show today. We thank you so much for being there. Stand up to your responsibility and be the Nigerian that you are supposed to be. Let's build our country together. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. On behalf of the entire team, saying thanks for being there and have a wonderful night. <laughs>